Welcome to our NFL picks against the spread for you, brought to you by us here at Sportsnet for you if you're on YouTube. And it is week 14. Where did this season yeah, go? Yeah, I know. I was thinking the same thing right before we came in here. It's just like flown by. Yeah. Um, we still have no idea who is a contender, who is a pretender. So we'll no. try and figure it out together. Sure, yeah. Who is going to we'll cover. see if we can do that. Uh, how do we dissect the first two teams who I think are both pretenders, but if they got hot and made a run into the playoffs and was a spoiler, I wouldn't be surprised. Dallas at Chicago, a Thursday nighter, yeah. early December style. Both teams six and six. Uh, so this game does have playoff implications. Dallas is on the road, but they're minus three favorites. Mm. Yeah, so it's basically just, you know, who's going to win this game. Yeah. And, and really, I think, you know, despite the, the loss last week which which you predicted actually I did. um you know your your bills predictions have been going much better of late um but <laughs> but uh i i think i think this is a much better dallas team than than the bears um and and i think when we talk about the cowboys we always talk about they they beat teams that are bad and then they don't show up against teams that are good and that has held true so far this season and I don't think the Bears are good. They're they're six and six, but you know they've they've taken care of business against uh, the likes of David Blau. Um, so I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I think they are going to bounce back. I think they're going to win this game. And you know, seeing the Le- the Eagles lose to Miami is going to give them a, a boost. Um, and I think they win this game. Back to back Thursday night games, so no short week for the Cowboys, which I do think is, I suppose, a small advantage. The thing with the Cowboys is the book on them is relatively out, outside of the Jets game, which was somewhat of an anomaly where they they got beat down. In New York, they lose to teams with a winning record. Uh, They beat teams with a losing record. Now what do you do when the team you're playing has a record that's 500, the same as you? I think they lose. You think they lose this game? I do, because it's not even the trend of winning against – bad teams losing against good teams remember how they started the season three and oh they were hot they were rolling since the first month of the season they've been a pretty bad football team even in the games they've won they haven't looked all that great so i think with the turmoil in dallas uh with players screaming in the locker room jerry jones giving impromptu press conferences was not all that new um I, i think it all unravels this week, and I think the Bears win. I think home. Jason Garrett would have to go if they lose this game. I, because there's still a chance they could make the playoffs. I agree, but there has also been conservatively 17 times over the last five years where I said, I think Jason Garrett has to go. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, going with, I'm going with the Bears. Uh, I mean, listen, they, they're underdogs, right, at yeah. home. So it could be close, and they could still cover. But I wouldn't be surprised – if the Bears win. Uh, wow. In a loss, I was impressed with the 49ers yep. th- this weekend. Oh, definitely. That was the game of the week. That, w- that was a lot of fun. And I think those are the teams of the year for me. I, if you asked me who's going to be in the Super Bowl right now, mm-hmm. although I'm reticent to ever bet against the Patriots, just take them off the board, I would say the Niners and the Ravens. They dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Yeah. If you asked me right now, who would be in the NFC Championship game, I would say the Niners and the Saints. Yeah, these two Uh, teams for sure. The Saints are at home. They're two-and-a-half-point favorites. This is a big game. It feels wasted at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Who do you like? Yeah, this is another big game, and I think it's interesting because I I wanted to look at, you know, who who has the advantage um, in terms of home and road because the Saints always have that advantage um, in New Orleans, but... Um, they're five and one at home, but the 49ers are five and one on the road. They they just lost their first road game, so there's a lot at at odds there. But I really think that the 49ers are going to win this game because they've they've shown that they can run the ball really well. They've shown that when they needed Jimmy G, he can make the passes that need to be made. They're getting healthy. They're probably going to be the healthiest they've been in a few weeks. And the Saints, I'm just not sure of that offense. As good as they are, and they're probably one of the best rosters in the NFL up and down, but Drew Brees 
just doesn't give them the explosiveness that they had say last year when they were blowing teams out pretty regularly they're not doing that this year we even saw it against the Falcons on Thursday night like the Falcons hung around for way too long you know they're a successful onside kick away from being real or well I guess they had that but they were they, uh, a successful drive after that onside kick of tying that game so the 49ers are a whole other level I think we see a bit of of the Saints being exposed here as the offense fails to keep up with a team that can dominate you in a, in a couple different ways on offense uh, in the 49ers yeah two teams that are 10 and two uh, you know this this game very well could be uh, for the top seed in the conference I am a bit surprised that the Saints are favored um, I, yeah the, they are at home but over the last month or so the, the Niners have been uh, the better football team. Yeah, somehow, I just don't trust Jimmy G fully to go on the road and get a big win. If this game was in San Francisco, I'd be really comfortable with the Niners. But I'm going to lean Saints. I don't feel great about it. I'll tell you right now, it's gonna yeah. not going to be my, my gold, silver, or my bronze. Right. Um, but I'm going to go the opposite way of you again um, and go with the Saints. This game is surprising, the next one that we have up here. And it's surprising because, in full disclosure... Uh, every week, you know, Gilo says, ah, there's about four or five games that aren't that interesting. Well, let's skip those. We'll just touch on them quickly. And I evidently always forget which yeah. ones they are. Yeah, and we have to, and, have to like, freestyle one of them. Yes, and in prompt, do I put him on the spot and make him talk <laughs> extensively on my toes. about a game he doesn't really want to talk about? Yeah. I was convinced that one of those games this was week gonna this was going to be this one. Right. Cincinnati going to Cleveland. The Browns are eight-and-a-half-point favorites. Cincinnati riding the high of a whole one-game winning streak because they won't yeah. have a winless season. And the Browns probably said goodbye to their playoff so. hopes with their loss a- against Pittsburgh. You want to talk about this game, yeah, so the re- take it away. The reason I, I kept this game is just because the Browns are so much fun. Like, okay. th- whether they're a disaster or whether people finally believe in them again. You know, there were a lot of people who were picking the Browns to beat the Steelers. And I think we both did here, uh, but I... I later in the week changed my pick and went with the Steelers because, you know, the Steelers' defense is that good. But the Browns, they're just a circus, uh, and it's a lot of fun to talk about them. And I thought this game is really interesting because the spread is also so big. Mm. You know, they're coming off a game where they only managed 10 points and the offense did not look good. Um, and and uh, Baker Mayfield got hurt. Uh, it looks like he, he's okay. But still, there's a lot of drama around this team. Uh, and the Bengals won the first game. So, you know... There's a little bit of intrigue here, and when it comes to picking the game, since since the Bengals allowed 49 points in Week 10 against the Ravens, which I think was by far their worst game of the year, the defense has not given up more than 17 points, and they're averaging uh, less of less than 260 yards against in those three weeks. So, quietly locking down teams. Now that came against the Raiders, the Steelers, and the Jets, all teams that we would willingly admit are not good teams but I don't think the Browns are necessarily a good team either so when it comes to picking um, the Browns by eight and a half I just don't have any faith in them to cover that so I'm going to take the Bengals here Uh, I am as well I mean you sold me with with, with (laughs) your numbers because I was I was leaning uh, Browns but you sold me Bengals and at this point last week I obviously as you heard I I picked the Browns no if I knew Freddie Kitchens was going to where uh, they started it. He's t-shirt. just asking for it. Yeah, you know? to, to uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood performance, uh, I, I would have picked the Steelers. Yeah. Uh, and this would be, uh, listen, they've struggled to get the ball to Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, yeah, they he, really have. He, he's had catches in terms of yards in the 20s uh, three times this year. He's only had that in his entire career before this season twice. Wow. If if you told me that at the beginning of the year this Bengals game was going to mean something to the Browns, I thought, yeah, maybe they're going to clinch the division at right, this yeah. point. Uh, not fighting for their playoff lives. And so it would be so very Browns for them to have a meltdown to a team that you know virtually was, was tanking for Tua before Tua got hurt. Um, and... and it, their entire franchise is in even more chaos yeah. than it is presently. So yeah. I like chaos. Dalton, yeah, d- definitely. And yeah. that's why we're talking about this game, because the chaos is amazing. And but, 
but like with the Bengals, Dalton brings a lot to the team, and and we saw that uh, with them dismantling the Jets on the weekend. So I think I think the Bengals are going to give the Browns a rough time here. Yeah, I do think. I mean, they, their choice to sit Dalton and play Lindley was because they knew they weren't going to be a playoff team. They wanted to take a look at another guy, and if yeah. they lost uh, on the way to doing that and improve their draft odds, great. Then when it became a real possibility that they would go winless, mm-hmm. which no new coach wants on his resume. No, no team we, wants that yeah, at then all. Yeah, then we need the better option, which is Dalton. So they, they yeah. get a bump with Dalton. And at, the, at 4.35 p.m. Eastern, I would not be surprised if the QB with the better stats in this game is yeah. not Baker Mayfield. Yeah, it's, it's Andy, Andy Dalton. Dalton. Yeah. Um, the Lions... Are and this is a massive spread. It is, yeah. I, d- I didn't see that until this morning. Points. I know. Underdogs against the Vikings, yeah. who are uh, the home team and and are undefeated uh, thus far at home. But thirteen points is a lot it's to huge. cover. It's huge. And the Lions, they give up a lot of points and a lot of yards on defense. But the offense, it hasn't really mattered who was at quarterback. Obviously, Stafford is the guy you want there. But Driscoll has led this team to some big outings. And then last week, David Blau really surprised a lot of people. His first pass being a you know 75-yard touchdown, and he really had the Bears against the ropes. The Vikings are by far the better team here. Um, on Monday night, I think it was turnovers that really did them in in Seattle. Um, and like you said, they are unbeaten at home so far this season, but they're just 3-2 and two against the spread. Uh, and those two losses against the spread have been both of the times that Minnesota has been double digit favorites at home. It came against Denver where Denver took a 20 nothing lead and then blew that and then it also came against Washington. They also won that game, but Washington kept it closer than I think it was 16 points or something really early mm-hmm. in the year. So, um with them being huge favorites again and their record at home against the spread being what it is, I'm going to take the Lions. Um, I'm going to take the Lions as well. Uh, considering uh, Cook went down in the Monday Nighter with the yeah, shoulder that's, injury, that's super um, this the full disclosure is, is early in the week, but yeah. we don't know um, if and when he'll be available. So that that concerns me. Yeah, and me, the, the, my fantasy team takes a real uh, hit with that injury. So. Yeah, that's not you not know, a good time. Yeah, to that's have what your, really matters. Your your lead back, your yeah. your RB one down yeah. uh, due to injury. Uh, this line started at 13 and a half. It's now at 13. I'd expect it to come down even further. So I maybe so. if you want to wait it out, um, the Vikings may be a better play. But mm-hmm. at 13 as it presently stands, that is too much for me. Yeah, if it gets to nine and a half or something like that, that's a much more manageable line. But 13 is just that number that makes it a bit uncomfortable. Uh, so let's stay uncomfortable with 13 once again. Yeah, The Packers <laughs> hosting Washington. Um, again, Packers are a pretty good team at home, uh, five and one at home, and they're six and four against the spread in their last ten. But for most of those games, the spread wasn't double digits. Does yeah, that give you a little cause of concern. It definitely does, especially after Washington um, uh, ruined my survivor uh, pool this week. Uh, by beating the Panthers, and they did so by like running all over the Panthers. Um, I think Geis and Peterson combined for 230 yards on the ground. They just really dominated, if th- and that's the way they're going to play, and that's why this spread isn't uh, – it's not one I want to take in terms of, of uh, the Packers because this game will end up you know, being one that's a bit drawn out, that Washington could have some long drives, um, and they've been under they've been double digit underdogs six times so far this season and they're four and two hmm. uh, in those games against the spread so given all that um, like I, I do expect Green Bay to win this game uh, fairly easily but I don't like the spread I don't like the spread either and um, you can at me if you want you can comment if you want uh, it pains me to say this but it's true Aaron Rodgers at this point is a average quarterback like, yeah I think there's been some real troubles with the offense there's clear that there's not a really great relationship with him and his receivers outside yeah. of Devonte Adams yeah and so to think that um the Aaron Rodgers of old is going to come through and throw for four touchdown passes and have a beautiful Hail Mary before the half and blow teams out like that's just not the quarterback that we've seen 
um, over the better part of this season, yeah. um, minus a week here or there, but yeah, really over Raiders the better game. part of the last couple seasons. Yeah. Um, and this year, health is not the issue. It's just um, he hasn't been able to make those types of throws to make that offense that explosive. Uh, and, and so 13 points is way too many points uh, for me. From one big spread, uh, we jump uh, to another. Uh, this game, though, in the AFC, Houston are nine-and-a-half-point favorites hosting the Denver Broncos. 60% of the public is not afraid of that and is happy with the Texans probably winning this one by double digits. For you. I don't. I have no idea what to make of this game. To be completely honest, I've thought about this this one a lot because the spread is is a bit concerning, and and the Broncos have been that team that's like the Chargers almost that have been around in most of the games that they're they're playing in, and so nine and a half points even after the Texans did what they did uh, to the Patriots on Sunday night. I'm still really hesitant because. I still view the Texans as being a bit of an inconsistent team. Mm -hmm. They've yet to put back-to-back -back really great performances together. And the Broncos have a quietly good defense that I think could give um, Watson some trouble. Um, the The Broncos are 6-2 and two against the spread in their last eight games. So I'm going to lean on that again, and I'm going to go with Denver. I am too. Maybe eight and a half. For sure, seven. Uh, yeah, a touchdown. Nine and a half is too many points, and it would yeah. be so, so, so very Houston Texans. A week after, you beat the Patriots. You look yeah. great. Yeah. You're expanding the playbook. Got some red zone uh, tendency breakers and trick plays. Uh, Deshaun Watson looks great throwing against you know one of the best secondaries yeah. statistically of all time. Yeah. Um, it, it would be very so Texans for them to lay an egg at home the week after against the Broncos team uh, that will not be making the postseason. And so I, I, I don't know if they'll win, but I certainly think it'll be close and, and they'll cover. And so I'm going to go with Denver. Uh, Baltimore, a team that looked like they might have stubbed their toe, but they found a way to manufacture and get a win. Um, they played a team who looked great. They probably yeah. played maybe their best uh, four full quarters of football in the Buffalo Bills. And is this disrespect for the Bills Mafia or respect for Lamar Jackson that on the road, the Ravens are six-point favorites uh, in Buffalo and in, in, in Orchard Park? I think it's it's a bit of both. I mean, you have to respect the Ravens and what they can do. I think the Niners are obviously the class of the NFL. And before that game the Ravens were blowing good teams out so um, you got to respect that but also the Bills I, I still don't think they're g getting the love that they deserve I, I think this is a really good Bills team Josh Allen's playing the best he's ever played he dominated the Cowboys um, and and they seem to have gotten a little better against the run but that's the biggest concern here for me is that uh, that Ravens running game which if it's not Lamar Jackson it's Mark Ingram or Gus Edwards um, and, and I think that's going to be a big problem for Buffalo, uh, especially if Josh Allen isn't able to get it going. Who knows what the weather will be like, but I don't, as well as Allen has played, I don't fully trust him as much as I trust uh, the consistency of Lamar Jackson. So, well, I like the Bills, and I think they, they do have a really good chance of, of shocking someone in the playoffs and winning a playoff game. After seeing them win in Dallas, I, I don't think Sunday's going to be their day, and I do like the Ravens by a touchdown. So if Lamar Jackson is the best running quarterback in football, and I think hands down he is. Yeah. The second best might be I think it is Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of running for scores, Josh Allen might be the best. Yeah. I, and I do Great think, red zone quarterback. Yes, and I do think that um, in the snow, in an ugly football game, this, this suits the Bills. It suits the ethos of the team that McDermott has built. And unlike most teams, Patriots included, uh, that the Ravens have played in this, in this gauntlet of tough games they've had week in and week out over the last uh, month and a half that they've come through unscathed, the Bills have so much team speed on defense. That, I mean, no. Yeah. Is, is anyone defensively as fast as Lamar Jackson? No. But, no. but I, I do think, similar to the way... The 49ers 
still gave up 100 yards in rushing, but um, it, it didn't become an ACC football game. Yeah. I do think that the Bills will be able to make some plays um, defensively, and so I think they're going to lose. But I do think that they're going to cover. I think it's going to be a close game again like it was with the 49ers. And so I'm, I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. I'm sorry, Bills Mafia. <laughs> Disclaimer. I'm sorry, Drew. Um, our but, but to be fair, n- not only have the last couple weeks you've picked correctly f- with the Bills. This is true. But you also picked them to beat your Cowboys last week. So, Correct. So while the narrative is that everything you say about the Bills, the opposite happens. Actually, over the last couple of weeks, it's gone the other way. So I, I feel like the curse might be over. I think so. Still, you probably should apologize every week like you just did, right. I think, just to be safe. But I wanted to point out that you're doing better with your Bills predictions than you have been. Yeah. I think in, that's important to In say. Bills Mafia fashion, if I get the uh, Bills pick wrong in a situation where you know they, they might get a wild card spot may even mess around and win the division I, I think whether it's drew or just the other bills fans that work with the serious sports that might just come in and like pick me up and throw me through a table yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it so would have upset. to be on fire yes right of course <laughs> um but that, if the bills if the bills like you said keep it close in this game i still think that's a big win for the bills yeah. because a lot of people expected these two games dallas and baltimore to be their downfall and instead you know, they're showing that they deserve to be here. Uh, it, these two teams are not interested in keeping it close for moral victories. They need no, wins. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to the New England Patriots, a game that um, in the preseason we have circled on our calendar yeah. as potential uh, AFC championship game uh, preview. Uh, when Tom Brady was throwing to Antonio Brown and uh, Josh Gordon was looking pretty good, we thought this game might be a track meet. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. Although with Kansas City's defense, it might still be a track meet. Um, Philip Dorsett might be running circles around the Chiefs' secondary. The Patriots are minus three favorites. This started at three and a half. And surprisingly, at home in Foxborough, as favorites at a small line, the public is going with the Chiefs at 64%. Yeah. Are that, you? N- no, because that, that's really surprising to me. Like as, as much as the Patriots thing is being talked about over the, the last couple of days, you know, things are obviously not great there. All you need to do is read Tom Brady's lips. He'll tell you that things aren't great. But the Patriots at home are a sure thing. Yep. As, as sure of a thing as there is in betting in the NFL. Um, and, and the chiefs as, as good as Patrick Mahomes is, the chiefs just don't look right. Like the office just doesn't look right. And they won big against Oakland at home, but they were actually outgained by Oakland, uh, 332 to 259, mm-hmm. just 259 yards of offense for the chiefs on Sunday. Um, and so we, in the midst of all of this, um, overblown, reaction to the Patriots offense on Sunday we still should remember that they do have one of the best defenses of all time and by far the best defense in the NFL right now and I think they're going to give the Chiefs uh, a tough go and minus three at home yeah I'll take that all day yeah I'll take it as well you just feel like all week Tom Brady is going to be hearing about how he doesn't have his fastball anymore the velocity on the throws aren't there Patrick Mahomes, the new face of the NFL, you know, yeah. soon will be the highest paid player in the league, you know, throwing no look passes, um, that he is the heir apparent. Will it be a changing of the guard? Don't you feel like this is a typical game where yeah. the, the Patriots, Patriots offense dominated. just bounces back and yeah. they dominate? And, um, Sony Michelle runs for 150 on a Chiefs defense that isn't very good. No. Uh, and then we're, we're talking, we're sitting here next Tuesday and we're saying, you know, the Patriots are fine. Yes. I, I just feel like they are. seen that story time in and time. Yeah, I just won't again. believe it. If they do lose this game, if they lose to the Chiefs at home, then I'm willing to say things are wrong okay. because this is the kind of game that the Patriots will win time and time again. So if if they lose this one, that's out of the ordinary, and then you know sound the alarms. Yeah, they still uh, probably win the Super Bowl though. True. Yeah. Um, Tennessee and Oakland will n- will not win the Super Bowl. No, I mean Ryan Tannehill, MVP. 
No, I'm kidding. Uh, maybe. Maybe he could he could Trent Dilfer his way um, to Super Bowl with the Tennessee defense, you know, playing well under Mike Vrabel. But these are two teams that I've really struggled to be able to put uh, my finger on For sure. all year, and that would be the Titans, as I mentioned, minus three. Uh, road favorites going to Oakland were just when you think, okay, the Raiders aren't who I thought they were. Yeah, like Gruden's They're good. Is right. They revert back to being bad again, so and that's bad. why at home. They are the plus three dogs. Um, Oakland, though, four and one uh, at home. It, it, they're home for now of, of Oakland. Mm-hmm. Who are you going with in this game? This is a tough one it because is. as bad as the Raiders have been, they've and they've been bad. They've been outscored seventy-four to twelve in the last two games. Um, I'm I'm hesitant to pick them because, like you said, they're four and one at home. They're a much different team at home um, than they are on the road. Probably the biggest difference between uh, home and away that we see in the NFL this year. Um, and it's their second last game ever in Oakland, so they tend to show for these games. Uh, but there's something about the the Tannehill Titans, you know, like. They, they, it wasn't pretty beating the Colts on Sunday, but they did it, and they look like they're just – they believe in who they are right now. Uh, they can run the ball really well. Tannehill gets it done when he needs to get it done. The defense is good. Um, so while I still think that the Raiders are going to be better than they have been the last two weeks, I, I do think the Titans can win this game. Yeah, between – the ability to run the ball with Henry, run the ball if they yeah, need Henry's, to. Yeah, Henry's been the best running back in the league, and it's not really close over the last 16 games. He's just dominating. Yeah, and specifically when you look at his last couple seasons, uh, his numbers go up in the month of November and December. Yeah. It's as if as the year goes on, defenses get more and more banged up. Mm-hmm. They're not really willing to, to tackle him. True. And uh, it, it, for all those reasons, I think – the Titans control the ball and, and win um, in Oakland. Uh, Pittsburgh is going to Arizona, although I'm pretty certain that uh, there will be more Steelers fans in attendance as that is a good road trip to go to Scottsdale. They are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, are you a believer in the Duck era with the Steelers? Yes, I am. Uh, and it has nothing to do with Duck Hodges, who is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, he's better than what they were getting with Mason Rudolph. He'll take some shots downfield, and he's got confidence and, you know, all of that. But but Mike Tomlin is the difference here. And what yeah. he's done for that offense, uh, or for that defense, I should say, is remarkable because this is a team that, uh, you know, on offense, we know the story. Like, Big Ben is out, Juju is out, James Conner is out. And they're still finding ways to win games. And that is because the defense is so good. A top two or three defense, according to DVOA. And and we saw on Sunday, you know, that the Cardinals, you know, maybe running out of a little bit of the magic that they had uh, earlier in the season on, on offense. And uh, Kyler Murray really struggled. He's, he's dealing with some kind of injury. Uh, but the Cardinals just don't have it. Um, on offense, so I, I think Pittsburgh goes in and wins games like they have been winning games, you know, 16-10 or, you know, 13-7, something like that, but they get it done. And, like, I think Mike Tomlin is probably the coach of the year. Has to be. With Has what he's be, dealing right? with, yeah. I mean, maybe you can make the argument um, that McDermott should win it, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, when you when you go back to last year, I mean, he didn't have Le'Veon Bell for all of last year, but if we add him to the equation and losing Antonio yeah, Brown. no Bell, no Brown. Uh, and obviously no no Big Ben Roethlisberger. That's yeah. three Hall of Famers. Yeah, you, um, you lose the the triple Bs and you're still a playoff team. Yeah. It's crazy. So uh, I think it has to be Tomlin. And, and someone who, you know, over the last couple of years, people wondered about his job security. I think this was a better um, appraisal of the coach that he is. And when you just look at the Cardinals, the – Coaching supremacy on Pittsburgh's staff aside, um, their, their secondary is one of the worst ever historically. Yeah. Now some of those numbers are inflated because we are in a passing era. But also David Johnson's in a witness protection program, evidently. Um, yeah, he's gone. He went from someone who was drafted easily in the first round in fantasy to someone that you might as well cut yeah. at this point. It's probably third string, like 
in their depth chart right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen something like that happen just overnight. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, so to me, I think Pittsburgh at two and a half points, that's an easy, easy yeah, play for I agree. me. I agree. Um, Seattle minus one favorites on the road uh, against uh, the Los Angeles Rams. I'm actually surprised, and I know Jared Goff finally looked good. But it was against that Cardinals secondary. It was against that Cardinals about, right? secondary, and it was the first time he's looked good uh, in, in a month. Yeah, I'm surprised Seattle is only mm. minus one. Are you? I guess. I, I mean, this game was really close uh, when they played in early October, and if it was the spread, the Seahawks wouldn't have covered because they just won by a single point. Um, and it was good to see the Rams' offense execute. You know, it was a get-right game in a lot of ways for uh, Goff and all of those receivers. Robert Woods had a big game and Cooks and Cup. Um, but, and this is a very Captain Obvious thing to say, but the Seahawks are much better than the Cardinals. This is a much different team. And over the last month, the Rams have, have struggled against better-than-average teams. They've beat teams they should, um, not convincingly. But they've beaten them, and then they've lost two teams uh, who are, you know, we would consider better than average in the Steelers and the Ravens. Um, so I think I think this game will be close. Be, you know, these are division rivals, and and they will show for this game. But I like the Seahawks to pull it out and to remain undefeated on the road. They haven't lost away from home yet, so I think that continues. Yeah, and we saw in the Monday night are they just. Find ways to yeah, win. They do. So the when, ground game looked really good. Rashad Penny it looks like a different running back than he did last year. Evidently, that wasn't a bad pick after all. Yeah, I know. The burst he has is crazy. Yeah. So I, I just think, to me, this is an easy, easy pick for Seattle. The one sample size of the Rams looking like they're back was, was one thing. But, again, Seattle has been consistent throughout the year, home, road, and so, basically, one point, you're just asking me to decide who who wins. I think Seattle certainly will, will cover and win. Uh, and lastly, mm. the Monday nighter, the yeah. Giants at your Eagles. The Eagles are eight-and-a-half-point favorites, which, I mean, against the Giants, arguably the worst team in the NFC least at this point. Um, sure, you should be, feel comfortable with that. The line started at eight. It's moving to eight-and-a-half, and yet 52% of the public still with the Eagles – Sounds easy, but yeah, it's not easy. I the don't, I don't Dolphins easy game, this guy, yeah, this guy is killing us right now. Fits magic. <laughs> what is up with that? Um, will will uh, will Danny Dimes have a similar uh, <laughs> success? That, as, as will, Fitz magic? that will truly test my fandom. If if it's not one thing with the Eagles, it's the other. Like, and that's quite literal because the last couple of weeks they haven't had one iota of offense, just nothing. And then the offense finally shows up like they should, like you'd expect them to do against the league's worst defense. And then the defense can't stop them. I heard a stat uh, yesterday that is really quite shocking. The Dolphins didn't score their fifth offensive touchdown of the year until week seven. Wow. They allowed five straight touchdowns to the Dolphins on Sunday. The Eagles did. Wow. Five straight. Wow. So uh, things are bad. And, and because of that, there's... I don't trust these Eagles to beat anybody right now. I don't trust them the way that they, they weren't prepared for that game. And so until they show that they're actually able to, to win a game convincingly, I can't take them to win, let alone cover eight and a half. Eight and a half is a fair amount of points for an Eagles team that hasn't looked convincing. And I do know that the Giants aren't very good, but they still have pretty good skill position players. Um, they, they should be able to manufacture some points against an Eagles defense that has really struggled. Yeah, if um, that's the defense that's going to show up. If yeah. that's the, like, Devontae Parker. Oh, wow. Uh, Career like, day. Yeah, and and talk about witness protection program. Like, I, I didn't think that he was going to ever be a factor in a game, <laughs> let alone do what he did to the Eagles on Sunday. So if that's the off, if that's the defense, the secondary that shows up, I think I think Danny Dimes can keep it close. Yeah. Um it it should be um should be interesting to see if anybody wants to win the NFC East. Like apparently it, not. What's crazy is that Washington has two fewer wins than the Eagles. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, they're still alive. <laughs> that's crazy. 
Yeah, yeah, they could win out, and if the Cowboys and Eagles decide that they don't want to play football anymore, then Washington wins the division. Uh, the good news is Washington won't win out. No, so no, no, that. that's true. Um, that won't actually happen. Uh, let's uh, fast track through a couple. So you games. are taking the Giants. Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Yes, uh, fast track through a couple of games. Yeah, let's do that. Um, uh, Panthers at Falcons uh, and. Uh, a divisional matchup that used to mean a lot won't yeah. mean that much anymore. Who do you like? This is literally a coin flip for me. I, I have no idea um, what this one's going to be. But the Panthers, they burned me last week, as I mentioned earlier, in Survivor, um, and blowing that 14 nothing lead to Washington. So I'll take the Falcons. I just feel better picking the Falcons because I'm mad at Carolina right now. Yeah, I'm actually going to take Carolina. I, I I haven't gotten the Falcons right all year. Just when I thought they were dead, they started to play a little bit better. But I don't think um, that in what is a, a pretty short line, I, I don't think that they're going to stop the Panthers from covering. Uh, Dolphins at Jets. Uh, who do you like? Yeah, you mentioned that you don't, you can't pick the Falcons right. I can't pick the Jets right because any time that I think that I figured them out. Uh, they they lay an egg or they blow a team out. I have no idea. I'm going to take the Dolphins just because the spread is a little bit too big for me. Yeah, the the spread is surprisingly big. Yeah. I I mean the way the Dolphins have played over They're the last well month, they are. Yeah. And uh, the way they played over the last month, I wouldn't be surprised if the spread was flipped. And so certainly I'm going to take uh, the Dolphins in this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the Colts. Uh, are a team that I haven't been able to figure out all year either. Yep. Uh, they are going to Tampa Bay, who is minus three favorites. Who you like? I like the Colts. I think the Colts are just the better team. They're 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 better coached. Frank Reich is a really good coach. The defense is really good. I think they'll be able to force Jameis into some dumb decisions, uh, and I think they'll win this game. Ken, I'm surprised Bucks are favored. I know the records are relatively close. The Colts only have one more win, but the Colts have been decimated with injury, uh, and the Bucks play in a much easier division. I think that's why I think the Colts yep. win this as well. And then, uh, lastly, Chargers at Jags. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to take the Chargers. You know, no doubt Gardner Minshew uh, will bring something extra to the Jaguars, but he can't play defense. And that's, that's their biggest issue right now, is they can't stop anybody on defense, so uh, I'll take the Chargers to win. See, I think that we're going to have some, uh, not just some Fitz magic, some some Minshew magic, some oh, yeah? Minshew mania. I do. I think that I think especially at home, um, being three point dogs, I like that number. So I'm going to okay. take Jacksonville, uh, but don't feel confident about it. No, but that's why we're talking about this game at the end. Yeah, there are a couple teams I do feel confident with, mm. but let's start with you. Your your best best this week. Yeah. Right? I, I was saying uh, earlier to our producer, Drew, that I really don't feel confident in many of these picks right. this week. Um, so for bronze, I'm going Giants plus eight and a half uh, at Philadelphia because of all the reasons I said to, to not trust the Eagles. Um, and then I'm going with Bengals plus eight and a half at Browns uh, because the Bengals, I think, are a little tougher than their record suggests. And then my gold is your Cowboys over wow. the Bears. I, I, I know wow. it's risky, but I really just don't see them losing this game. Well, I it, hope it works out It's in such a big spot that they have to show up. They have to. Wow, okay. Well, I am going to go for my bronze. I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions as as 13-point uh, dogs. I think they can yeah. cover that. Yep. Um, and for my uh, silver, I'm going to go with Seattle. I, again, one point, that's nothing. I think they beat the Rams, and so I'm comfortable with that in the Sunday nighter. And then for my gold, give me some Pittsburgh Steelers, two and a half points. Yeah, that's a good one. It's not a tough line to cover. Yep. Yes, they're on the road, but it's not that tough to play at University of Phoenix Stadium. No, they should um, win that game pretty easily. So, so I will take uh, Pittsburgh, which brings us to uh, our survivor picks. Yeah. Um, who do you got this week? Uh well, I should say that last week in this spot, I picked um, Tampa Bay and then didn't go with them, didn't follow my own advice, and now I'm out of my survivor pool as a result. <laughs> uh, so woe is me. But I'm going to go with the Vikings. Uh, uh, the Vikings are playing – sorry, I've just completely uh, gaffed on this – the Lions. I yes. don't think they'll cover that 13-point spread. I do think they win that game. Um, so I'll take the Vikings. And for the exact – same methodology. I'm picking uh, another team, but same spread, uh, same reason. 
Uh, I'm taking the Packers. Mm. I do think they'll beat Washington. I don't think they'll cover 13 points. But uh, if you haven't picked Aaron Rodgers and the Packers yet, and there aren't that many easy games for you to pick them because they're in such a difficult division to navigate. I yep. mean, um, the NFC as a whole has been pretty tough this year. Uh, this is a nice spot to get uh, GB down. Yeah, at, at Lambeau against a bad Washington yeah. team. They should win that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you win most of your bets, and hopefully we helped. Let us know in the comments. We want to know, did you have a bad beat? Do you totally disagree with yeah. everything? Was that it I our said? fault? Yeah, probably mine specifically. <laughs> um, let us know, and if there are some lines that you really like, don't keep them to yourself. Yeah. Share, yeah. and share this video. Thanks for watching.